Hello there, and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. If we haven't met before, I'm Ash, and I'm the curator of this channel. And here, we aim to provide you with self-development tips, lifestyle advice, and various other knowledge which will help you on your journey to being the best chap that you can be. Now, very much part of being a chap is the way that you look and the way that you present yourself to the world because it's such an important part of identifying who you are and what you stand for. And a big part of the way that you, you turn yourself out is your footwear, your shoes, your boots or whatever you choose to wear. Now, me personally, I come from a military background. The first 10 years of my adult life I spent in the British military. And in that life, I learned to look after my kit and I learned the importance of taking care of the things which I rely upon. And very much shoes and boots fall into that category. Now, it's also vitally important because it's one of the things which people look for when they first meet somebody. That first impression is so important when you're projecting who you are to other people. And one of the first things I know that I always look for is I look down and I look at the way that the individual has presented themselves in their shoes or their boots. I mean, I've interviewed people for jobs uh, and for promotions in jobs, and I always use these little things just to identify if that person is somebody who can take care of the details, who's interested in their appearance. Because if you're interested in your appearance, you'll be interested in many more things and perhaps the welfare and you know the confidence of other people as well. So I always look down and if somebody comes in, they've got shiny shoes and it looks like they know how to look after their, their kit, um, it's a little tick in the box for me. I know there's somebody who cares about the way they look and they know how to look after their, their, their clothing, their shoes, their boots. Or, or conversely, of course, if somebody walks into the room and they've got scruffy, dirty shoes on, I think to myself, well, you know, you, you couldn't even be bothered to, to, to clean your shoes today before this meeting or before this interview. And uh, it just leaves me with a different impression. I'm not, I wouldn't judge anybody based on their, their shoes alone, but it just it gives you that first impression, does it not? So it's important to us, it's manifestly important to us chaps, that we project our best possible impression to people. So I've got a pair of boots today that I'm going to go through my shoe cleaning regime with you uh, just to show you what I do. Now it's four different steps. Starts with you know the very basic going up to, to shining them up. I'm not going to do a mirror shine today. I might do that in a later video. See how this one goes with you. See if you want to learn more. But I'm going to talk through a pair of the way I look after a pair of boots and uh, hopefully it'll give you some insight into what you could do. And I'm going to talk about some of the products I use as well. So it might give you an idea of things that are worth using for you. So let's get to it. We'll swing the camera around and you can see my shoes and we'll get to work. Well, here we are. And here are the boots that I'm going to show you uh, my shoe care regime today. Now this is a pair, a lovely in fact pair of chucker boots I've owned for about five years. They're from a company called Herring, which is a British uh, retailer, I believe. They don't manufacture their own shoes, but I bought these about five years ago. They're a, quite a good quality grain leather, um, day-night rubber sole. And I wear these shoes predominantly in the winter because the day-night sole means they're quite safe to wear. You don't slip and slide like you do with leather soles. Uh, and they do take a bit of a beating. I've had them for five years, so I wear them consistently throughout the winter for the last five years, but I've always taken care of them. I've deliberately not taken care of them for the last two or three weeks so that they're in a state so that I can use them as a good example to show you my shoe care regime. So as you can see, hopefully they've had a bit of a tough life. There's a bit of uh, bit of color being leached away there. I've been walking through undergrowth. There's a bit of dirt, bit of mud, and uh, they've not had a good few weeks, it's fair to say. So it's time to show them some love. Right, let's just get rid of one. We'll use that one to show you how successful our efforts have been at the end. So I'm going to take this one shoe, boot. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the laces. Uh, in this case, I don't always remove the laces. Of course, nobody wants to make shoe cleaning any more difficult or lengthy in it than it is. But taking the lace out today is worth the effort. So as I said earlier, this is going to be a four step process. And each step is individual. So in your particular shoe cleaning situation, you may find you only need to go to step number one, and then you'll be satisfied with the results from your shoe or boot, and you're happy with that. 
you might want to elevate it to the next level to make it look even better. And that's what it's all about today. It's going to show you the different levels that I go to. Now, in this instance, this boot is, it's dirty. There's lots of, uh, lots of rubbish on top of it and it's in no good state. So it needs to be properly cleaned. So in the first instance, what I'm going to do, because I can see there is sort of surface material on that boot, I'm going to take just a normal microfiber cloth and I'm going to wipe it over to make sure there is no grit or grime lying on the top that I'm going to grind into the leather and cause any damage to the boot. Uh, so I can see now it's pretty good. The first step is I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to soap down this this boot using some Safia saddle soap. Now Safia is a French shoe care product which is widely acknowledged within the shoe care world to be the premium product manufacturer when it comes to pretty much all types of shoe care products. Now I've only come into them the last five years or so. Prior to that, like most people, I always use things like Kiwi and Cherry Blossom to polish and look after my shoes. But I met a professional shoe shiner and he introduced me to Sophia products and I have to say I've never looked back. And all of the products I'm going to use on my shoes today are Safia. Um, they're widely available, you know, you can buy them at shoe care shops, uh, cobblers, things like that. I actually bought most of the stuff I'm going to show you today in my local shoe care shop. Uh, but if you can't find them in your local cobblers, you know, Amazon, places like that, eBay, plenty of shops on eBay where you can pick them up. They're a little bit more expensive than, you know, your Kiwi and your Cherry Blossom. When I say a little bit, what I mean is probably twice as expensive, but in reality, these are modest amounts of money. You know, we're not talking expensive products. If you spend 12 or 15 pounds on some shoe cream, for instance, you know, as I have done, and it lasts for three or four years, I think the value proposition, what you get back there is worth the effort because you get something which is infinitely better than the base product that you used to buy for, you know, one or two pounds and it lasts for years. So it's worth the investment because let's, let's take stock for a moment. You know, I paid 200 pounds for these boots some four or five years ago. And as you'll see at the end, when I've tidied them up, they look almost as good today as they did when I bought them. And that's because I've invested my time and some of my money in suitable products and the care of these boots. So when you think that your shoes or boots are some of the most expensive things in your wardrobe, it is worth investing that time and a little bit more money in buying something that you know is going to look after it well. Now to saddle soap your uh, boots down, it's quite straightforward. We've done the first step. We've made sure there's no rubbish or detritus lying on the surface of the leather and now we're just going to use the saddle soap which is a really straightforward process it's just soap basically we open up the container you can see i've used it quite a lot over the years and all we need now is some fresh water or some warm water i'm using here uh, and a brush now this is just a brush i picked up in a pound shop literally cost me a pound uh, multi-use brush and all i'm going to do i'm just going to damp that brush down, get a bit of water on it. I'm just going to rub it ever so gently into the saddle soap to get some of that saddle soap on there. And uh, now with a bit more water on there, I'm just going to lather up the boot. And that's going to take off, as you can imagine, any of the surface dirt. It's going to give it a good clean. It's going to get all the rubbish off. And before you know it, a bit more saddle soap on there. Got a nice little lather. And before you know it, you're already on your way to having a much cleaner pair of boots. There we go, simple as that. Now, you don't need to let it settle in or anything like that. All I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my cloth back and I'm just gonna wipe over all of that stuff, all that lather, which has formed on the boot. And that is gonna take with it any more uh, rubbish that I missed when I cleaned off the surface of the boot. And there we go. Already it's looking a lot better. Now this high quality Sophia saddle soap, it does contain uh, quite a few oils and other products, you know, waxes, which in the process of cleaning the shoe, you are already leaving behind on the surface of the shoe uh, some of these oils and waxes, which will protect and enhance the leather on the shoe. And, you know, it's a little bit damp now, so all I'm going to do, now I've wiped it over, is leave it for just a few minutes, 
just to make sure that it's dried down before I move on to the next step, which will be nourishing the leather. Right, now the shoe has had 10 or 15 minutes just to dry over. And I mean, really, you can see that there's some, some color missing. It's not looking its best at the moment. So one of the things with leather, of course, it's, it used to be a living thing and it needs nourishment and it needs protection to look its best year after year. Because that's one thing you can be sure with leather, when you've made that investment, if you look after it, it will pay you back. Now, one way of doing that is to make sure that the leather is fed. Now, Sophia, and I, I should say, I'm in no way sponsored by Sophia. I'm only talking about products that I've tried and used and have worked for me. They do a product called um, Renovator, or Renovator, if you want to say it in English. Uh, and it's basically just a, a cream, a hydration cream for your leather. I like to think of it as, you know, face cream for the boots. And basically, it just re-energizes the leather by adding some moisture to it. It's got waxes and oils in there as well which really do encourage the leather to look its best as time goes on. And it's very simple to apply. Uh, but before I do that, just before I start, I am going to put a shoe former or a, a shoe tree inside the shoe or the boot in this case, just so that, you know, I've got that positive resistance when I'm pushing down on it and all the leather is taut. It makes it so much easier to work with. Now to apply the renovator. Um, I'm not going to use a dauber. A lot of people use a little brush. Personally, uh, I prefer to use a cloth wrapped around my finger because I just find it so much easier. In fact, I save up old shirts and things like that. And just a, this is just a piece of cotton material that I've saved wrapped around the finger, you know, just in a simple fashion, just like that. And you just dab it in. And there we go, a little bit on the end of your finger. And now I just apply it to the leather evenly all over the shoe or boot in this case, uh, making sure that the renovator gets in all the little cracks, nooks and crannies. And a little bit goes a long way. Um, and already I can see that this color returning to the leather here, because up to this point, the leather was starved of anything, um, you know, which was returning to it, the hydration, which really helps it plump out and look its very best. You can use it on the, on the, on the edges as well, the welting. And as I say, a little bit goes a long way. You don't have to put a lot on your, your finger. Uh, and before you know it, you're going to cover the, your boot and it's going to be so already looking a damn sight better than it did a moment before. Now, by removing the laces in this case, I get the opportunity to make sure that the whole boot has had a good working over with the Renovator. And there we are. Keep working it in. I mean, if your boot or shoe is particularly starved of, you know, uh, moisture or hydration, you can do this stage more than once, you know, particularly if you've perhaps picked up a pair of shoes that have been left in the back of a cupboard for months or even years. A good way of bringing some life back to them would be to get your renovator out and to just give it a good going over and then, you know, maybe go over it again or even another time after that, uh, just to make sure that the leather is well protected. Now, as I say, it does impart waxes and oils onto the shoe as well. This stuff is widely available. I mean, perhaps less so in cobblers than, you know, the polish, but um, I think it costs anywhere. I mean, I've seen it anywhere between 10 and 15 pounds available online. I'll put a few links below, uh, as I say, to the products I'm using today, so you can easily locate it if you want to buy some online, but by all means, go and look for it yourself. Uh, this one is, as I say, very well thought of indeed, because a lot of people just use this. Now, at this stage, all I'm going to do, now that it's taken a moment or two to dry, still drying a bit on the side there, um, it doesn't take very long, just a few minutes, and before you know it, it is time to move to the next stage, which is very, quite simply, um, brushing it off. So applying the brush, brushing a sort of finish to that material. Now I'm using a horsehair brush here, 100% horsehair brush, which I picked up in a cobbler's oh, many, many years ago for, I think this brush cost something like 12 or 15 pounds. Uh, I have two. I've got one, a black one, which I use for very dark colored shoes. And as you can see, this lighter colored one, 
which I use for my browns and lighter colour shoes, uh, just to save the, the sort of cross transference of the polish between shoes. It's worth making a little bit of an investment in a good brush. I mean, you can pay a fortune for some brushes, but you shop around and you can get very good brushes for very modest amounts of money. I expect this brush to last me, hopefully, for the rest of my life because they really are what they appear to be, simple, good quality products. Now I've allowed it to, uh, to dry for a few more minutes and now I'm gonna take my brush and in time-honored fashion, when it comes to the polishing of shoes, I am just gonna apply the brush liberally all over the surface of the leather that I have treated with the renovator. Nothing more complicated or difficult than that. Give it a good old brushing. This will make sure that everything has been well treated and already we're getting a bit of a shine coming to the boot. In fact, I go as far as to say it's already looking 100% better than it was just a few minutes ago. Not only does it look better, that the leather is now properly protected. It's been hydrated, it's got some waxes and oils from the renovator which have been left behind on the surface of the boot and it is perfectly fine. Now, if you were happy with, with this level of finish, you could stop this process now, walk away, and you could be happy that your shoe is protected, it looks good, it's got a nice sort of, I would say, a matte luster to it rather than a shine, but, you know, it's looking very good. And, of course, it's taken just a few moments. You know, how long did that take? Just a few minutes to apply the renovator, leave it just a minute or two to dry, take it off with a brush, and that's your work done if that's all you want and that can be the extent of your shoe care regime should it be you know that's what you're satisfied with now in this instance as i saw at the beginning some color had been leached away from the leather you know these shoes now have been worn consistently for five or so years often in the worst months of the year so they are looking a bit tired and a bit of extra color can add quite a boost so the next step step three will be the application of some shoe cream. Shoe cream is really where you bring more life and more patina to your shoes if you wish to do so, because there's a lot more color, uh, pigment in shoe cream than you find in polish. I didn't realize that. I mean, quite early on in my sort of shoe cleaning life, the only thing I did was apply polish, the stuff that comes in the more shallow tins. But as I've gone on, I realized that shoe cream is actually where you know, the real protection and coloration of your shoes can be made. So I'm gonna just move over here. I've got um, a shoe cream that I've bought from Safia. This is a mid-brown color. Uh, it's pretty good. It's very similar to the Renovator, but it's brown. Uh, and it's got quite a lot of pigmentation in it. There's all different colors of shoe cream. However you wish to uh, patina your shoes, you can choose the color. Again, this is anywhere between 10, 15 pounds, wherever you choose to buy it. But it lasts, oof, you know, a little bit goes a very long way. I mean, I've owned this particular pot for about three years and I consistently do clean my shoes. So, you know, you can see there's more than half of the tin left in there. A little bit goes a long way. There's all different colors depending on the shoe that you purchase and the direction you want to take your shoe. So for instance, this is, um, I've got a pair of uh, mahogany colored shoes. Now this is a mah mahogany shoe cream. If I were to apply this to this particular pair of boots, as you can see, it's a much richer, redder color. Uh, and it would in fact, you know, alter the patina of the boot and give it a different direction in life. But in this instance, I'm quite satisfied with the mid-brown. It's gonna be the color I apply today. And exactly the same as the application of the Renovator, or the Renovator, my cloth. And I am just going to apply the cloth around my fingers, get some on the end of my finger, and quite simply, just apply that over the surface of the leather, a little bit at a time, using a little bit, as I say, goes a long way. It's, uh, it's expensive stuff, really, you know, when it comes to the product. So you want to try and be frugal with it. So a little bit does indeed go a long way. And just dab it around, make sure you've got good coverage all throughout the leather. Now, particularly with a grained leather, you'll see that it's going into the little gaps in the graining. Um, that's no problem. You know, we're going to brush it off at the end of this. So don't be worried if you're seeing that and it concerns you. It doesn't take very long. 
I'm kind of flying through it really. It might take a little bit longer if I was spending time doing this at home, uh, as you probably would be. But there we go. I've applied one layer over the surface of the boot um, and that is now gonna take a moment or two just to seep into the leather Again, this is very nourishing as well. You know, this product, as well as applying color uh, and applying more waxes and oils to the surface of the leather, it's also going to nourish the leather. So if you don't want to do the sort of renovator step, you don't want to spend the extra money on another product, you could simply just buy the shoe cream and use that as your, you know, your stage one or stage two. Every one of these stages is you know, unique and individual, and it's up to you whether or not you choose to use them on your shoe. What I would recommend you do is allow sort of just a few minutes. It doesn't take very long at all to dry. It's already dry, uh, but the longer you leave it on there, it can seep into the leather. You know, if it's a shoe that you want to apply a bit more color to and it's not been looked after very well, you can really thickly apply it, leave it overnight, let it go to work on the leather and then brush it off the next day. So it's, it's inside your control really, how you look after this shoe uh, and how you use the product to your best advantage. Now I've applied uh, that mid-brown color I'm just going to put that to one side. It's well dry, so I had about a couple of minutes to dry. I can see it's dried, it's all matte uh, finish now to the polish. And all I'm going to do is simply apply the horse hairbrush and vigorously take off that polish, that shoe cream. Um, and yet again, we've elevated the shine of the shoe and it's already, I can see, taking on a little bit more of a shine it's looking good the leather is now sparkling and coming to life and all I've done is applied a single coat of renovator which has hydrated the shoe and a single coat of shoe cream and I hope you can see in the light it's already sparkling shining and it looks a well I said hundred percent better with the renovator Shall I say 200% better now? The areas that, where the color had been leached away have now returned because there is quite a lot of pigmentation in these shoe creams. A lot more, as I said, than you'll find in the wax polish, which we will use as the next stage. Now, as I said earlier, if this is enough for you, and let's be fair, it will be for the majority of people, you could stop at this stage, walk away, and you'd have a lovely, shiny, clean, hydrated leather boot or shoe, which is gonna stand you in great stead when it comes to you know, the way that you project yourself to other people and the impression that you give. Already, you will have spent more time and effort on your shoe than 99% of the chap population out there who really don't put that much effort into it. But we can go one step higher. We can elevate this boot even better. And that is with wax polish. Now wax polish is kind of the traditional uh, step. I mean, uh, as a chap growing up, this would have been the thing that I'd have done first. You know, I would have just applied this to my shoes and that would have been where it stopped for me. Uh, it's only with a bit more knowledge and understanding of the leather and what works best for it, do you realize that you know, using things like a hydration cream and using a shoe polish cream gives your leather the best possible look. Now to finish off, uh, Wax polish is most certainly where I would end my journey today with this particular pair of boots. Now, wax polish, again, this is another product by Safia. Um, you'll be familiar with, you know, Kiwi and Cherry Blossom and all these other uh, polish products, wax polish products that you'll find in supermarkets, in cobblers, in other shops. All polishes are not created equal. Now, this is the Safia Medal Dior. This is the upper range. Again, probably retails in the same region. Um, you know, anywhere between £10-ish. Again, this is a product, once purchased, I would expect to last for many years because you don't use a huge amount of this stuff. So if you buy it the once, you're going to have it for a long time. Comes in different colours. This is a brown colour, a medium brown, which is the same colour as the wax, um, the cream polish which I applied just before the last stage and this should give us the final level of protection and the final level of finish that I seek to achieve today on these boots. So let's pop him open and it is 
uh, orange looking, but it is a brown color. And this is just the final stage. So back to my cloth and I wind it around my finger one more time. Now the wax polish needs to be applied in just a light dose. So again, a little bit on the end of the finger. And now I am just going to apply it in a light coat all over uh, the surface of the leather. And the way I like to think of this fella, now wax polish is what gives you the shine. And it also gives you that final level of protection for the leather because the wax, of course, will dispel moisture. So if you're walking, you know, it's a, at the moment, it's December in the UK. It's a very wet time. The rain is uh, hammering down on the roof as I'm here doing this. And it's a time where your shoes take a beating. If you can imagine that wax is like a little overcoat for your shoes and it is providing a level of protection for them against the, 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 you know, the, the moisture outside and the cold and the, the, the sort of salt which ends up on the road this time of year, the gravel and the grit, you're walking through puddles and things like that. Uh, and these fellas, they just give you, give your shoe that added level of protection that will just do it that little bit more. So again, much like all the other products, once you've applied it, leave it settle for just a moment or two to dry until it takes on a matte finish. You can see it's already entered that stage. And now I just get my brush again. You can see the importance of this brush. It's such a, a versatile item when it comes to the maintenance of your shoes. You can put the polish away. I'm not going to need that again. And again, as we've done up to this stage, all we're doing is applying a good hard cleaning uh, sorry, not cleaning, but uh, a polishing, a buffing of the boot just to take away any of that wax which has not found its place and it's not going to be in use. And we're polishing it up to a high sheen. There we go. And I can see already, even after just a small amount of time and effort, that the leather is now absolutely glimmering. And if you want, I'm just gonna take my cloth just to make sure there's no smears or any bits left behind, give it a quick brush off. And there we are. Now this shoe has gone from being filthy dirty. It's gone from having lots of grit, grime and gravel and salt all over it. Uh, it's had a wash. It's had a brush and polish with the saddle soap. And that's taken away all of that rubbish off there. And in that first stage, we imparted some waxes and oils, which we know will help protect the shoe and get it ready uh, for the, the elements that we're gonna throw at it. Stage number two was the, the protection and the nourishment of the leather. So we applied the Renovator, which gave hydration to the leather, plumped it up, and it made it look better. You know, it really, at that stage, we gave it uh, some oils and waxes contained within the Renovator, and it looked 100% better. We could have walked away at that stage. We could easily have walked away, and still the shoes would have looked great, and they would have had an element of protection. But being fine and dandy chaps, we decided to elevate the shoe to the next level, and we uh, took the shoe cream, which again, nourished and protected the leather, but in addition, left a higher proportion of oils and waxes, on the leather as well, and also added quite a lot of color pigmentation, where the leather had lost some color, some of its uh, pigment over time and exposure to the elements. That shoe cream just added that back at the same time as leading, leaving waxes and oils on the surface of the leather. And we brushed it off, and we could have quite easily walked away at that stage, satisfied in the knowledge that our boot looked great, and it would certainly have stood out in a crowd. However, we are top chaps after all, and we then went to the final stage and we got the wax polish. We applied it fully over the surface of the leather, we've taken it off with the brush, and we are left with a beautiful, shiny, glossy boot, which looks 101% better than that tired old buddy of his, which I'm gonna bring back in now, so we can compare the two, just to have a look at them both together and which one do you think would look the best if we were walking into a job interview, meeting somebody important for the first time? How would we like to project ourselves and the way that we dress and the fact that we can take care of the details and the fact that we know how to look after things? These are the reasons why we undertake these activities. Not only that, 
that the boot, which is looked after like this one, will probably last two or three times this boot here. So not only will this one not look very good, but it'll wear out more quickly. It'll become uh, affected by the weather. It'll look awful. If you look after your footwear, it will last you many years. You know, I would expect to get 10 years out of a high quality uh, shoe or boot that I've spent, you know, a few hundred pounds for. And, you know, if you're going to make investments in your wardrobe, the longer you get back out of that investment, the value proposition works in your favour. So there we are. I'm not going to go any further because this is a grained leather. Now, if I had a shoe which had a smooth leather, I might want to elevate it to the very highest level with perhaps a mirror shine, which basically just means applying layer after layer of the wax polish until we get that fantastic shine that you can see yourself in. But that's not appropriate for us here today. I'm very happy with what we've achieved in just a few minutes of work. And yeah, I should be very pleased to get these back on and wear them out in this tragic winter time that we're suffering. So I hope you've enjoyed this journey, learning how I look after my shoes and my shoe care regime. And there may be one or two of these stages or maybe all of these stages which you would employ in your own shoe care regime. So thank you very much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please do click the like button below. It means a lot to me to know you're enjoying what I'm producing. Uh, click the subscribe button because that way, if you click the little bell icon as well, you won't miss any future material that we put out there. And I wouldn't want you to miss anything in your journey to being the best chap that you can be. So thank you for joining me and I look forward to speaking to you again very soon.